So you're a web designer and you've been sold with the idea that you need to learn a no-code tool and build the websites you design because that's what everyone does nowadays, right? Well, my friend, I'm here to tell you there's another, and in my opinion, a better way. Let's go. Hello, my friends. If you're new to the channel, welcome. My name is Adrian Somoza and I teach advanced web design and freelance skills. So if you're interested, make sure to subscribe and enable notifications. Let's face it, no code is the popular thing right now. Everyone is teach teaching and learning about no code tools, right? Now, what if I told you I haven't built any of the websites that I show on my examples and that I've helped even three clients already go from no coding and design to just design. Now, I know there are many reasons why you guys are deciding to know, like learn no code tools. And here are some, and I'm gonna put them as expectation versus reality, right? Because I've talked with many designers and you know the expectations of learning a no code tool don't necessarily match the reality. And then tell me in the comments if you resonate with th these things. First of all, you expect to have more control over the result. That's reason number one, right? You want to have more control over the result and, you know, fine tune everything, even on the building part, right? And yet you're still stuck in your skill level and it's taking you way too long to learn and grow your design skills. So you're now the roof to the quality you can produce because you are learning slower because you're doing two things. And so you expect to have more control over the result, but over what result? Because a simple website with scroll animations, it's not gonna be portfolio worthy. Am I right? Okay, reason number two, many designers ex expect to have less clients because you can take on more work from each client. That's correct in a way, and yet you're positioning in the in the same way that most designers out there are positioning. So by definition, you have a sales disadvantage because there are much more designers plus no code developers out there than advanced web designers. So your client actually has more alternatives if, if you're positioning as a both designer and no code developer than if you're just positioning yourself as a web designer. And so more alternatives for your client means that you have less power in the sales process. Now, you also end up developing more than you would like and clients start coming to you with just the design and asking you to just develop it. Am I right? So it's much better to be positioned as an expert in one field because clients with higher budgets know the value of hiring experts. So you will be able to command premium rates, earning more in the same time, is what we know as working smarter, not harder. So number three, you expect to know what's doable and improve your communication with developers because you have the same language. And yet you end up developing the websites yourself, so you're not really collaborating with, with other developers and you end up doing all the work. Or what's even worse, you spend hundreds and up to thousands of dollars. I've heard designers spend up to $3,000 on courses just to know what is doable and what is not. And just to have like a batch in your curriculum that says, I know programming as well. Here's a much more cost efficient solution. Go on awards.com and you, you will know right away what's doable and what is not. Done. No money spent, solved in minutes. Next reason, and last one. You expect to create amazingly immersive websites because you're doing both things, right? Now you have control over everything. And yet, the clients you attract are not valuing you as an expert, you don't have the projects you're proud of showing on your portfolio, and you suffer from the imposter syndrome because all of those three things happen because you're focusing and spreading yourself thin on two different careers, learning code half of your day, learning design half of your day, 
And you cannot learn as fast as someone who is focused in doing just one thing. So naturally, you will fall behind. Let me tell you a little bit of a story. I learned HTML and CSS back in the day around 13 years ago. And I used to do both design and code. My main goal was always to design full time. And my brother was a full time developer and he would partner up with full time designers. And so I saw that as my north, right? And I saw it as a clear goal that I had. And so I strived to work towards that. Two years later, I got my first full time job as a designer. And I started collaborating with developers. And I remember feeling frustrated, right? Even though they had the best attitude and the lead would always tell me everything is doable, it's just a matter of time. And so what happened is I realized the limitations, one of the budgets, two of the expectations and three of the times of the projects that I was working on, right? And I got used to doing simpler designs just to make sure that we didn't have a lot of back and forth with the devs telling me like, we cannot do this, we don't have the time for it. So then I got into MediaMox and I got assigned a project where the crea chief creative director, Yuka Vermans, told me, no pressure, but we need to win awards with this one. And so I got to work and what I did was I created something a little bit upwards of what I was used to create, but something conservative so that I don't have I wouldn't have to go back and forth with the devs too much. I presented the draft to the developers and the developers, to my surprise, told me, it's okay, Adrian, but come on, man, we really need to win an award with this one. So to my surprise, right, I got to work back on this project and I pushed the complexity of the project to a point where I thought it was like, okay, this is crazy, right? And I showed this new approach to the developers and the developers told me, to my surprise again, okay, now we're talking. So they weren't scared with this more complex design that I thought of. They, are, they were actually happy with it. And, you know, we got to work with this, um, finish the project, and I'm gonna show the, the result here, right? We won an award, I think a couple of awards, but at least a side of the day in triple double awards. So what are the lessons from that I took from this? There are two lessons. Number one, there are other developers today that are ready to match your skills in the complexity that you can design as, and you don't need to learn no code tools or how to build a complex website yourself. You can partner with developers that have already advanced skills as you might have in design and that can translate your ideas to life and even push you to do something better. Number two, to play in the big leagues and stand out from the crowd, you need to do one thing and do it really well. I, ha I don't know any designers inside of Media Monks where, where I used to work, right? We were winning awards, we were doing incredible things, and every lead designer, every senior designer in Media Monks wouldn't code. They wouldn't do the websites because they were solely focused on one thing and building expertise on one thing, and that's why they got to that point. That's why I got also to that point because I was focused just in design. I wasn't building the websites. Here's the bottom line. It takes 10,000 hours to become a pro at one thing. That means five years full time, eight hours a day during five years of extreme focus on one thing will take you to a pro level. Now, if you're doing two careers, that means it's going to take you 10 years to get to a pro level at those two things. So getting to a pro level, will take in design, if you're doing two things, it's going to take you double the time than if you would be focused just on design. Here's the thing, architects design houses, but they don't build them. That's to me the best metaphor I can come up with. So you don't need to build your websites brick by brick. You can have someone who builds websites, who is specialized in doing that. These are two different careers and they're different mindsets and it's gonna drain your energy and your time to 
to try to learn something that is so so mathematical and rational like development when you lean more towards a creative mind. Now, if you're leaning towards a more rational and mathematical mindset, right, then development might be your thing. But if you have a creative mindset, right, you love music like I do, you love art, you love um, expressing yourself, right, and doing creative stuff, then you're going to be much more happy and you're going to be playing to your strengths if you just focus on the thing that you're good at, okay? And you might tell me, Adrian, clients need and they ask for the two things. So what do I do, right? Well, the clients you might be getting might be asking for two, the two things, but not the clients that I'm getting or the clients that I used to get. Because, by the way, I'm focused full time in Bond. Many people ask me, so now you know. Um, but back in the day when I was taking on freelance projects and doing you know, web design, I would get clients who would just ask me to do one thing and they would get the experts in development that they would need to cover that part of the project. If I get clients that are looking for the two things, they are simply not a fit to work with me. That's the bottom line. So what's the solution, right? Step number one is choose a focus. If you were a billionaire, right, and money wasn't an issue, what would you choose? What would you prefer doing? the rest of your life. Would you prefer building the websites or would you prefer designing them? And by the way, if you like both, just choose one. And even if you're slightly inclined to it, you're you're going to be much better off than just doing the two. Num- step number two, claim expertise. So now say that you do one thing consistently throughout your online presence. And then step number three, actually do one thing. So work to add the missing skills, capabilities, and processes necessary to support that you are an expert in that field, whether that's designing websites or building them. If you're in this channel, I am inclined to think that you are more interested in design than in development. Just saying. Now, partner with developers who match your skills. That's the last step. Look for front-end developer, creative developer, or something like that on LinkedIn and then have a call, right? Reach out, have a call to assess if you make a good team with this people that you're finding, test out the relationship with the project and only keep working with the best matches and then also charge for a commission if you refer them clients and vice versa. So conclusion, if you decide to design and not build, you just saved five years of your money, energy, time and emotional health. And I can guarantee you will be able to, number one, win clients more often than not. You will have an advantage when having sales goals, being an expert versus not being an expert. And you will also be able to win by not cutting prices, but actually by charging even more. It's one of the toughest business decisions that you're going to make in your whole career. And that's why very few who are watching this video are going to actually take action on it. But I challenge you, take action and you will see soon enough the results. If you want to learn how to create your web design portfolio only using social media, I prepared a free course called the Web Design Booster to teach you the strategy that helped me get my first job, get hired at MediaMonks and RGA and get offered jobs at Apple and Microsoft as well as get great freelance clients. So check it out, the link is below. And now, if you're finding my content valuable, imagine all you could learn inside my signature program called the Web Design Masterclass. This is my mentorship program aimed at intermediate designers where you will learn advanced web design skills and learn how to monetize them so you can have more freedom to do the things that you love. Once you enroll, you will have access to the lifetime of the program, which includes group coaching calls every week where I answer questions and give feedback to the Bond Club members. And you can connect with other like-minded designers who are in the same boat as you are. If you want to join, check the link below to apply. If you're qualified, I will schedule a call with you so we can chat and decide if it's the right fit for you. That's it for today, guys. Hope you found it valuable and as always, Let's bridge the gap one pixel at a time. 
Check out this playlist next to keep learning.